Hello, hello, hello. Um, this is Apostle Holy Hill Horsley with Thursday Night Live at 5. And I do apologize for being 15 minutes late. So we're going to head, go ahead and wait for a few minutes for others to come in. Um, but in the meantime, we are listening to um, J.J. Harrison and you for praise after this. There will be glory after this. This is this song. All right. We're just going to give it a few minutes because I, I was late coming on. So just allow people to catch up. So everybody is doing well. Can you hear me well, Paula? Just make sure. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, connection. Let's see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Good. We're just giving it a couple of minutes because I know I was late. Got some interesting thing to dissect today. All about it after this. That's the song. Hi, Carolyn. There will be glory after this. So remember, this is called after this. Yes, there will. <laughs> okay, just a few more minutes. Gonna be a testimony. There's gonna be glory after this. This is JJ Harrison and Youthful Praise. JJ Harrison and Youthful Praise after this. This is a song that I heard um, earlier in the month of October. Um, so that was a, a song of encouragement, knowing what God was getting ready to do, because God's gonna get the glory, right? God's gonna get the glory. Um yeah, we're going to go into some um, deep study with this one. And like I said, I'm going to have to go to various streams of media because just in case this one is cut off, um, I want to be able to make sure that it stays online. And so I'll be also going on restream so that I can go through multiple streams of media access. Um, this way, uh, we'll continue in the sessions without losing any of the recordings, okay? So just in case Instagram has an issue, just in case YouTube have an issue, I said I was going to go to Odyssey. I was going to go to um, um, go to um, Rumble and other media streams. But in the meantime, we're going to head and, and, and start from here. I just want everybody to be prepared because we're going to go into the year 2023. And I want everybody to prepare themselves because they need to understand that after this, after 2022, year 2022 uh, was a time of many trials and, and getting yourself adjusted. Uh, so I just wanted everybody to remember, I hope that you learned the lessons from the last two, three years um, that have gone on um, behind us. It's behind us. So I just want you to prepare yourself for what that which is to come. 
So let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you and we praise you, Lord, for those that are coming online. We thank you and we praise you, God, for all those that will be listening uh, at another time and another day. Father God, we ask that you bless their minds, bless their hearts, give them a heart to receive. Father God, you said that you wanted to, um, there's no place to, to, no place that you can rest. And so, Father God, I pray, God, that you'll be able to rest your mind inside of our mind, that you'll be able to rest in us, Father, in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, you said you would give us a place, a place of rest. Um, those who do your will will have the place of rest. That is the Sabbath. And so, Father God, we just give you the glory. We give you the praise and the honor in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, well, praise the Lord. Um, we were talking um, last week. It was a basic intro, um, giving you uh, just a... A little short synopsis of where we'll be going on this particular live stream and this is called after this um, so I wanted to talk about the lost son and I had described a little bit about the details of what happened with the lost son or the son that went away after he asked his father for all um, all of his um, increase so going to the book of Luke chapter 15 um, it's and he says verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follow to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after this, the younger son gathered together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Okay, so we're talking here about the son that had, was given his, um, it, given him, the father had gave him goods. He gave him his goods that followed to him. He gave him income. Okay, and so a few days later, Many days later, the son decides to get up and leave. You know, it's a mystery that he would get up and leave. It's a mystery that he would sit down and ask his father for the goods that were given to him out of his father's living. And so many days, um, so that means he was in contemplation. It was a time for him to think about what he wanted to do. And I talked um, before about, um, remember, there's two sons in the house. And one of the sons, you can, the other brother, you can see um, how he was always feeling about the brother because as soon as the brother returned, he was angry. He was angry and he was upset because the father had planned a party for him. And the father would say, my son was, was dead and, you know, now he's alive or he was lost and now he's found. And so they begin to make merry, but that son was really angry. So a lot of times there are issues uh, within your whole, um, your whole household. Okay, household issues that can run you away in terror and cause you to do things that you would not have ever done. It's just because you weren't mature enough to deal with the issues called life. Now, I want to go to a, per a certain part of the book of Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms chapter um, 2. Uh, one of my things, one of the scriptures that I stand on highly, I stand on this highly. Uh, praise God, Tammy. I stand on this highly, and that is... Um, Ephesians 6 where it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood we wrestle not against flesh and blood people have to remember that there are planners in the heavenlies there's planners on the earth there are planners um, that are making plans for you and you don't even realize that they have um, spotted you out they've already prepared a destiny for you and it's going to be contrary to 
the destiny that God has for you, okay? And so in Psalms chapter 2, I want you to listen to this. And then I'll go to Ephesians chapter 6 so that you can get the concept of why I say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not my words. It's the word of God. Psalm 2 says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Okay, so there are planners. There are planners, kings of the earth, and they're working with spiritual powers. Okay, working with spiritual powers. So I, I wanted you to see that in Psalms 2. Why do the heathen rage? So these are heathens. These are people that have no connection with God. They have no desire to work with God. They're wicked people. They're heathens. They're pagans. They do not worship the same God. And they sit in the, they sit down and make planning stages because guess what? They hate the righteous. I want you to know they hate the righteous. So they spot you out to try to get you out of the place that you were meant to be from God. Okay? And they want to cause your destiny to be thwarted out of the place that God has originally ordained for you. But in Psalms 2, the scripture says that the Lord, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. See, the plans that they have for you, God is going to confuse them. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. The plans that the heathen in their rage, you know, there's some people, you, you don't even understand. Some people, listen, some people watch your family. They're jealous of your family. They look at the happiness in your family from a distance. And they're very jealous and they're trying to see how they can get in there some kind of way. They don't, they want to know your secrets. They want to know what's going on because to them, there's no way that a family could be this close. So what they come to do, they come in the children of the devil, children of disobedience, cursed children. These are cursed children. They have no desire for God. And all they do is sit down and plan mischief for people the next day. These are people who may be, um, you know, you see it in, in, in childhood, in school, where you, you're going to school and you got the gangster sitting on the side the dummy sitting on the side um saying oh what you gonna do with them books what you do you go to school okay so they don't even have a desire for school or a desire to get an education or a desire for a future for themselves but they love to come in and bag on people call the the ones that are really serious about school try to get them to stumble to not be in school and for them they think that they're doing them a favor no they're the mouthpiece of satan that is there to try to thwart them from their purpose in life, okay? So if school was hard for them, or if their home was hard for them, they want a misery loves company, so they like to make other people miserable, and they never want anybody else to make it, never. They wanna be the one making it, and they wanna be talking about your life all day long, okay? So that's just one piece, all right? And so you have haters. So the Bible talks about the heathen, they're in a rage. And the people, they're imagining vain things, useless things. Their imaginations are evil. Their imaginations are wicked. And they just plan and plot evil things. They see you coming and they want to destroy you. Why? Because there's something about your presence. There's something. Listen, a lot of us have was raised up in the church. We knew about church, but we didn't know about life and the evil things about people. Okay, people in your communities, people in life, you didn't realize that they were spotting you out, trying to see what they can do to thwart you off your purpose, try to keep you down. Okay, all they want to do is get in to see you a rising star to make your star dirty. Okay, all right, so it says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing. So they are taking counsel. They want to sit down and plot and they scheme and they want to say, how can they take it? Because it's against the anointing. Remember, it is the anointing that destroys every yoke. It is the anointing of God that destroys every yoke. So against the Lord and against his anointed, against his people who have the word of the Lord, against his people who, you know, you may not even know you, you know, the Bible talks about these, even though you are an heir, you're not ready to be an heir because you have to have tutors and governors. Somebody has to train you to, to be in that spot. And so when you don't know it, you have other people who've been um, in their position and they're lieutenants in the world. And they're saying, you come to, but you're an heir. You own everything, but you don't know really what's in your hand. 
And so they come in seeing and they want to link up with you so they can get your goods. See, your goods come from heaven. I'm going to say that again. It may not look like you have goods, but your goods come from heaven. And there's treasures that are stored up for you. God is always going to bless his righteous people, period. He's going to bless you. He, he reigns on the just and the unjust. He reigns on the just and the unjust. He does. And when we have things in our life that God knows we have need of, he will supply it. Okay. And so the heathen, they're not, they live in fear. Or they, they think about how to steal from people. They think about how, they always think about what to do with other people's stuff. They're covetous. They, they're, they're covetous. They're evil. They, they don't think about anything other than themselves. They don't have a future for themselves. They only think about themselves. So here we are. Um, Psalms 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointing saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. But the Bible says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. God is going to put them in derision. Mm -hmm. They think they try to do whatever they need to do, but God is going to have them in derision. See, the devil is, is really angry. The devil don't like the word. That's why I was telling you all, this is going to be a very important part of, of the teaching. And so this is why I'm going to have to expand it to other networks because I know that this is something that is going to really um, uh, make the enemy uh, panic and be angry. Okay. So I just want y'all to know that. So just be ready because guess what? After this, after you know who you are, after you've learned who you are, and after you know that no weapon that was formed against you has the ability to prosper, and you know that these are weapons that have been set up by the heathen that's raging against you, but when you learn who you are, what your identity is, and you go back to the Father and to his protection and to everything that you are given access to, oh no, it's on now. So somebody, it's on now. Because after this, after this, once that young man went and, and spent all his goods and then came back. He knew what his father's house was about afterwards. But it wasn't until he went out into the world system and he got to see that this place will drain you. This place will deplete you. This place will take from you. This place will cause you to be a slave. All right. It's, it'll cause you to be a slave. That's right. It's on now because once you know that you are connected to heaven, once you know that you are child, you are a child of God, not a child of the devil. And once you know that the heathen are raging and they're always taking counsel to see how they can bring you down. Oh, and when you learn your weapons of warfare that God have given you, when you come back into the kingdom and you grow up in the things of God. Oh, listen, honey, baby, it's on. It's on like donkey Kong. It's on. Okay, so Ephesians 6. Okay, see Ephesians 6 and 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's his might. It's not ours. See, it's his. And it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand against the wiles of the devil. So you got to put your armor on because you're standing against the wiles, the trickery, the devices, the schemes, the plans, the plots of the devil and the people that he's using. So it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. What is flesh and blood? We're wrestling not against human people. There is a spirit behind the people. We wrestle not against um, flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, um, against the rulers of the, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth and have it on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shot with the preparation for the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See, so you have to have your armor on at all times because you have the evil one that is always trying to come in to get you off your assignment, to get you off your place, to catch you off guard. All right. And so, again, we're talking about after this, once you know who you are in Christ. All right. And once you really understand that there are planned, people are planning things. Um, the kings of the earth are planning things. Everybody is making plans. So I want you all to, I should have brought my other book in here, but um, I want you to understand that there are committees. There are um, people assigned um, to try to study. They're, they're called think tanks. And they're to try to study a people, group, nation, city, um, demographics. They're there to study it. And because they like to enslave people, it's not for the best of you. It's for the best of them. Okay? They try to do everything that they can 
to get you into their network of goods. Their ne because again, remember, it's a slave thing. And the only way you can stay free of the slave trade is by you staying in your place in God. I'm going to say it again. The son went out. He got his goods from his father. But once he wasted all his good, he became a lack. He understood that even he wished to even eat what the pigs were eating. Okay, that's an unclean thing to a Hebrew. That's an unclean thing. He wished to go and like he even thought now he came to his own mind. So where did his mind go? If he had to come to himself, where was he? You see, so there are some things, okay, that we do want to talk about. Things like mind control, okay, councils and kings. They set up mind control. These are things, um, project paperclip, okay. There are project artichoke. There are different projects. There's Tavistock Institute. I want you all to look up these things. Tavistock Institute, project paperclip, project artichoke. All these things are 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 trained so that you can um, training guides so people can learn how to control the masses so they use media they use entertainment they use television they use all these different parts of the system of their system to get you in a place where you are really controlled by their network by their common factor by their ways okay so here is a book it says um, how the Illuminati create an undetectable total mind control slave okay now in the old dictionaries the word Illuminati was there and you got to see how it was born and how how it came into purpose and plan all right um, they'll say those conspirators well those who conspire against God's people those who conspire against the world system those who conspire that's true a theory says it, it's not true. This is just a thought in process. But when there is a true conspiracy, a true plan that is being done to destroy mankind, mm -hmm, to destroy mankind, to destroy God's people from their own way of thinking. Not, God is the one who created the world. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. All Everybody belongs to God. Okay, Everybody belongs to God, but it doesn't mean that everybody's going to want to serve him. Because some people are going to like what the devil gives them, okay? They're going to like it. They like what they do, and they like to order people. See, people in that um, slave encampment or the heathens, they don't like to listen to nobody unless they got something that they have undergirded as a plan that they expect to come in and take over somewhere, okay? They only do it for favor for favor. It's not because it's their heart is good. Uh-uh. They got a plan to come in and stick and attach themselves to you some kind of way. Okay, so within this, how the Illuminati, these are plans. Listen, these are plans. These are things that they have done that worked. Okay, um, and this is how they have controlled people. So some of the organizations, and these are programmers. Um, CIA, this is the documentation is with the CIA, Project Paperclip, um, Project Artichoke. These are uh, documents. These are things that were once classified. They were um, classified, and now they have been unclassified. So these are things that you can look up. But these are things that they were actually doing to take the mind of the people and control them and puppeteer them the way they would like for them to go. All right. So I have two of these. All right. So this is one of the books, and there's also another one. But you do want to look up the Tavistock Institute, and there's also a, a movie. It's called The Stanford. The Stanford Project. The Stanford Project. That's something else you want to watch because when you think that you won't be um, caught up in this, they learn how to take down the strong ones. Okay? They learn how to take down the strong ones so the strong ones can bend to their rule. So the strong ones can bend to their rule, can bend to their way because it's the strong ones that they, that they find them as a challenge to take them down. But everybody has a pressure point. This is why you need to be around people who love God. This is why you need to be around people who understand how this stuff works. Okay? Because, listen, Project Paperclip, they have learned to split your personality. And they've learned to fragment you with torture and torment. And when they have fragmented your personality, this is how people get multiple personalities. 
They've done this up because the trauma that have caused so much pain in their life, they had to create themselves to be somebody else so they don't have to re relive or look at that pain that they are now experiencing because of what they have done by a plan. By a, it's, it's, it's just something that's written out. They have a whole project of what to do. They have a whole mastermind, a whole plan of what to do, okay? And so these are the things that they have done. They're using ELF. They're using a lot of the things now uh, with the airwaves, okay? And so this is why I'm telling you, a lot of the things that you may have done in life, you may have had a desire just to be protected, but you didn't realize that the devil was sending his protector to you, but he was sending the devil to you so that he can take you and put you in captivity. Okay? So there's nothing wrong with somebody wanting to be protected, especially females. There's nothing wrong with that. But if the person is a heathen, they're wicked, they don't think about God. Look, look at their track record. Who are they hanging around? And what it's a lot of things we have to take into mind. Okay? So who the sun sets free is free indeed okay who the sun says free and free indeed so look at this this is um <laughs> love bombing the child until about 18 months i'm telling you this is this is all strategies okay the, the writing is little okay so this is when they want to um take a child and bring a child into hypnotism or bring a child break the child in their mindset um and then step four because they're still talking about a child fracture in the mind then it says, um, I'm going to look at step four, fracturing the mind. The four stages built upon the foundation of disassociation created in the first and second steps. And the love created in the third stage. This is love bombing. It says the demonology of the first step also helps pull in demons associated with programming, tunneling the mind, and multiplicity, which are used in the fourth foundational step, which is this step. I uh, said, often in the fourth step, the child's mind will fracture along the same disassociation fracture lines that trauma of the premature birth created if the child is not a premature baby it will need some additional help to want to dissociate the child can have its senses overwhelmingly repeatedly to the point that it learns to react to its surroundings by what appears on the outside as the numbness and mentally is simply disassociation listen this this is a whole <laughs> this is a lot okay this is a lot and this is why i really want you to understand that as we go into this series of teaching, as we go into this place, all right, there are people that are set up. They've learned to do it even in gangs. They've learned to do it in pimps. Pimps got books on how to control their holes, okay? Pimps got these books on how to do it. Um, <laughs> look, it's all about slavery. It's all about making somebody else your slave. It's all about nobody else has their own thought. You do what I tell you to do. Don't ask no questions. Okay? So this is what it is uh, about. So when God is celebrating, this is why when somebody comes to the Lord, the angels of God are celebrating. This is, you got to celebrate when somebody has come out of sin and they come into God's marvelous light. They come out of darkness into the marvelous light. They join into God's kingdom. Because the enemy, listen, the enemy is the enemy and the enemy wants to destroy you. So once you've made it out of his traps and you ran to God, okay, they even got songs where they don't want people to go to say, um, if you a punk, go to church. <laughs> they got some crazy, why? Because they're trying to tell you that only weak people go to church. Listen, you can't fight no unseen spirit. You can't fight a demon by yourself. You got to have somebody greater than that demon you know who's greater the lord you know why because he created them they fell okay they fell so i'd rather go to the creator than go to anybody else in between let me go to the creator let me go to the one who knows what these things can do okay and then he'll give you the tools to be able to stand and to be able to bind the works of these entities to bind them up and i'm not talking about you know what things that other people are using i'm really talking about the word of the lord and prayer and being around the fellowship of saints who have the same mindset. This is why you can't go to a church that's playing games. A church, a, a fellowship is a place of equipping. It's a place of equipping and worshiping the Lord together. Okay. So you got a lot of people who've been trained up in a church. And that's another way of looking at um, how the church has been right now. Look, Babylon is fallen. 
it's, it's fallen. It's become a habitation of demons. It's become a habitation of unclean, be unclean beasts. Okay, so when a church has not been in accordance to the at book of Acts, following the things of the kingdom, and everybody thinks that this place you go is just a place of fun, a place of, oh, we got a, a nice get-together, ain't no demons cast out, ain't nobody being free, ain't nobody understanding that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. All you did was just join a club. You just joined a club. Nobody's building you up. Oh, you, they'll teach you how to be successful. They'll teach you the steps. You know, they'll bring the financiers in to show you how to get rich. Listen, better than any of that is the wisdom of God. When you have the wisdom of God, everything that you have, God will send it to you. But be on his, his path. The path that's narrow. Straight is the gate. And narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. See, not everybody is going to be able to find this, but there sure is a Broadway. A lot of these people are in, a lot of churches is in the Broadway, okay? Wide is the gate, and many there be on that road. When you find a, a fellowship of believers who is really trying to keep you from, keep you in the will of God, and keep you into the place of where Jesus said, occupy until I come, they are doing, all they're doing is trying to help you survive on planet earth. <laughs> they're helping you survive here, okay? All the days of a man are full of trouble. You're born into a world of trouble. The only one that can help you is God, okay? Because if you get his spirit, who's over all spirits, over all demons, okay? He gives you the authority with it. And that's why a Christian, a believer in Christ, can look at a demon and just say, come on out in Jesus' name. He's going to give you wisdom on how to do it. He's going to give you wisdom. But again, Psalms 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and they take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. They don't want nothing to do. They don't want, they don't want to be under you. They want to be over you. They want to take advantage of you. See, a demon don't have a right to be in the body, in a person's body. But some people who have accepted them, like Beyonce, accepting Sasha Fierce and whoever else, a lot of these celebrities, nothing but demonic, demonic people, because they have to take in these, these spirits in order to be able to do what they do. Okay? So a lot of them, they're taking in. They're getting high. Okay? How can you perform that many performances? Okay? So there's a lot of things that I said we're going to tap into. But again, these are still part of our introduction. But your safest place is in the will of God. The safest place is in Jesus. And so in this, again, how the Illuminati create. And you can see that little hand in the eye. Okay? All seen eye of horse. And you can see that, that puppet there and the strings attached. See? They just want to program you. And you got the eyes behind. See? That's the spirit behind all of this. Okay? The triangle. They're using symbols. All right? But there's a spirit. Be see the spirit behind? See them eyes behind it? Okay? How they could un, 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 what does it say? Undetectable mind control slave. You don't even know that you have been being programmed. But God wants to deprogram you. And I want to be here to help you. Okay? So these things have been around for a very long time. But I need you to understand that this is for serious people who want to be free. It, it, it is a choice to be free. You want to be free. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The Bible says come out from among them and be separated. Okay. So after this 2020, 2022, we've got to see that when you were, when, when the churches were closed, different things for the pandemic and so forth, a lot of people sat down and started questioning everything. What is this and why are we doing what we do? Okay. Where are we with God? Where are we? And all them people that died, Lord, God, help. Where did they make it to? Because everybody that's in church don't mean that they, they made it. Because you know why? The Bible says, let me tell you who cannot enter into heaven. Let me tell you who cannot. Um, and you're going to be surprised by this. We're going to go to the book of Revelation. Okay? Because you've got to know God. You have to know God for sure. But it says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death so you won't be able to go into heaven you won't be able to go into heaven you're going to be in a place where there's fire and brimstone and it's going to be the second death so first it's the fearful 
You full of fear? God said, get that fear out. Only fear him. Don't fear man that can destroy your body, but fear him that to take your body and soul and throw it in hell. See, we got to get the fear of the world out of us and start fearing God. Reverential fear for God. And when you have reverential fear for God, you'll value yourself. You'll value him. You'll value people. You respect people. Okay, because you have a reverential fear from him. He's the one who teaches how you love your neighbor. He's the, as yourself. He's the one who teaches you how to love yourself. Okay, so we're going to start this new series. We've already started. This is a new series after this. So when you've understood that there are people taking counsel, they're planning now. Okay, I talked about the United Nations, Agenda 2030. These are just tips of the iceberg. Okay, because it goes deep. But I just want you to know, be prepared because we're going to get into the study. And I want you to know that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Playtime is over. And I know many of you have heard it before. And if you've never heard it before, just know that there is a God who created you. You're not here by accident. You didn't hear, come here by a big old bang. No, he made you and shaped you. He's the one that created you to be designed in his image. He wants us to have the image of his dear son. Okay, so the life's trials, the things that you'll go through is going to help you to get to know him. Because remember, it's the enemy who does not want you to know who he is. So it says 2025 for child pandemic. There's a lot of games that are being played. Why? Because the beast system is here. Everybody talks, everybody know about the mark of the beast. But the beast system is here. It said don't take, don't take the mark. Don't worship the beast or his name or his image. Okay, it's not just a mark. Don't worship him. Don't worship his system. Don't worship his image. Okay, and don't take the mark. God marks his people. And I want you to be marked with God. I can't do it. Only God can. So I'm going to pray. And I hope you join me on next week. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And again, I said I was late. And I do apologize for being late. We waited a little bit, but this is 30 minutes. Um, from once we started uh, so god bless you we will talk again next week but again if you wanted to know about this book you can get this on amazon if any is available um if any are left but this is by cisco wheeler and um fritz springmeyer you can also look them up on youtube and you'll be able to get some um background information especially about project paperclip and how mind control works this is where you get the child sacrificing this is where you get child trafficking. This is where you'll get, um, you'll start understanding how um, the children that were SRA victims, sexually, realistic, ritually abused children, how they had the program um, set up for them and they made people not believe them, okay? They have them in the governments, the judges, police officers, they're all over. So this book, somebody says, what's the name of the book? How the Illuminati create an undetectable total mind controlled slave all right i uh looks like my internet connection is trying to fade out but i want y'all to be encouraged i want y'all to say you know after this i don't want nothing nothing of the world system we're in this world but we're not of it we're in it but we're not of it but you're gonna have to take authority you're gonna have to stand look at the stores a lot of stuff is getting scarce right now okay so there's a lot of things that are happening and I will be praying for you all, but I want you to know it's the word of God and his power. You don't have to use sage. You don't have to use a lot of candles. You don't have to. It's the word of the Lord. It's by the spoken word of the Lord and the spirit of God that is in you. You have to know that you're one with him. Okay. So God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for your people that are joining this hour. And we thank you for those that will be coming on later. Father, we just ask, God, that you would give them the understanding, the wisdom, and we ask, God, that they would be seekers of your will, seekers of your way. And so, Father, we give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you next week.